Uh, also want to thank to, to all the authors and contributors to, to the tooling ecosystem, especially in Scala. They have been doing great, really great to, tools uh, for make uh, us, our developers, our labor easier day by day. So, uh, as you probably know, uh, all our experience surrounding a certain programming language can be greatly affected by the tooling uh, that we work for. Uh, this can either boost the adoption of certain language or make to decline to, to work with certain language. So this is why uh, I think uh, to, to take into account all the tooling surrounding this uh, Scala community is uh, important and that is what I want to, to take. This all to, to create such awareness and, and the latest uh, initiatives surrounding the, uh, the tooling ecosystem in Scala. So uh, every day we use tools for a bunch of different things. Um, the more common ones are editing and compiling our code and testing it. But we have a, a lot of more to, uh, things to do and we need tools for it. Uh, and do we care uh, about these tools? Because uh, these tools have the, the capacity to c improve our productivity in regards how much time we need to, to see a certain result and how much time it's taken to see feedback from the compiler. These results can be either uh, our code being compiled, the webinar is being published, uh, to see errors or warning that come from the compiler itself. And also, we, we want tools that can be lightweight and flexible enough to adapt and embrace our particular workflows, whatever it is. No, a tool that forces us to learn something new uh, are born in certain different way. So also these tools, we wanted to make as fast as possible and to show us their feedback as soon as they get it. Uh, this is how it looks like the, the feedback cycle for from metals. And here is the, the cycle for the diagnosis for the compiler errors or warnings. Uh, in Scala, there have been um, some efforts in improving the, the tooling, the tools uh, surrounding the language. Uh, in particular, in some, the last year or so, uh, with the adoption of the language service protocol. This protocol uh, was published in 2016 by Microsoft, uh, initially for Visual Studio Code, and since then has been uh, a great significant traction to, to uh, different language, programming languages. And now uh, are at least 30 different programmers uh, are working with this protocol. Uh, this protocol is to, meant to define a standard communication between an editor or, or an IDE and a language service that, that provides uh, language features like how to complete, uh, go to definition, or, or find all the references to, to a certain symbol. The main idea behind LSP is to standardize this uh, communication between uh, our editor, whatever editor we choose to work with, and the, the language that we are working with. So this language service uh, runs as a separate process for our editor, and there is a c communication uh, over JSON RPCs, which is a, a Asynchronous communication that can be also cancelable. So, in, in this case, the client, meaning the, our particular editor, is going to, to send uh, the server requests about uh, the user actions. This uh, communication can be either per case throw or when we save the file. After that, we are going to get feedback about the actions that we are. Uh, typing in this editor. So the cool thing about this protocol is that can, 
either for different uh, test editor, we are going to have uh, just one point to be able to re reuse all uh, the different tools for different editors and IDs. So this is going to boost uh, the ability for the tooling authors to, to make uh, different changes with, with less uh, particular changes in regards to uh, the different editors that exist. So LSP in, in the Scala land, we started with a first implementation by Julian Drasgos. Uh, it was for VS Code. And uh, now we have a different implementations in Metals. Uh, Dot E is also comes with a built-in uh, language service for VS Code and is using SBT for, for the compilation process. Um, for SBT, since version one, we have also uh, a, a LSP server that uh, can communicate with different editors and IDs. And we also have Enzyme that, that has uh, base integration in Drasgus VS Code. Uh, in regards to the, the editors and IDEs that are, are right now supporting uh, this protocol, we have uh, the, the Scala plugin in the nightly version so, uh, of the IntelliJ. Uh, it was also um, work being done in, in Eclipse ID uh, for VS Code and the major editors that we are using in, in this community. So uh, now we're going to talk about a little bit of uh, metals and, uh, and then uh, a couple of build tools that are either implementing LSP or BSP. So in, in the beginning of, of this metals project, but it's also based on the work uh, being by Dragos for BS code. Now, this is implementation of, of this language service. It has a little decent amount of features and works nicely with, with the ultimate uh, versions of the Scala. And it's also implementing BSP. We are going to talk about BSP in a moment. Uh, and using Bluetooth for get all the compilation information in uh, get this feedback as soon as possible. Um, metals can integrate with the major editors, uh, that be VS Code, Atom, Bean, and Sublime. And the cool thing about this tool is we have uh, an addressing of the common complaints uh, about IDs in, in regards to indexing. When, especially when we start running a new project, it, it may be a, a large code base. And uh, this indexes process can be in an hour gain in, for, from coding. So our attention can be dispersed and, and we got a uh, productivity lower because of this process. And also, normally IDs are consuming too, too, too many resources in our machines in terms of CPU cycles and memory. So this is the, the main goal behind the, these metals uh, for LSP. Since the version 0.5, uh, we have uh, more features in metals. Uh, since uh, we have this on hover uh, highlighting expression, so we can get the type uh, adjust to, to move over the, the, the certain expression that we have to, to evaluate. So as the cursor moves on, on this expression, uh, we have uh, the type uh, and, the, uh, and also the, the symbol signature if we want. We have also uh, more robust code completions. Uh, we uh, methods can suggest a range of use cases on, for overriding methods or, or to create a subsidy power matching and also to, to make import 
uh, or the other symbols that are not occurring in, in, in the scope of, of, the, of this particular file. Uh, I think this, this was released uh, this week. Um, th this version of methods that was called Radium. Uh, now it's possible for methods to integrate in an automatic fashion with other build tools, uh, like Gradle, maybe I mean. So if you have retry metals with SBT, now it works in the same way for these other build tools. They also update uh, the, the integration with Blob for the latest version, and make major improvements for VS Code integration. And also, it's possible to work with metals with uh, VS Code uh, extension that allows to, to work in pre-programming uh, in a remotely fashion, uh, just the, in the same way that Google Docs works. Now, another tool that is more for, for the tooling process uh, it's called SemantiDB. Um, SemantiDB is a direct schema for, for the semantic information about our code. Uh, they can model uh, many different Scala features uh, that is relevant for uh, develop, the development of, of different tools. And we can uh, gen generate this information via a compiler plugin. And this information can be persistent uh, SQL, JSON, or even Protobuf, uh, depending on the application needed. And processing this information doesn't uh, require uh, a, a running compiler. So it can be very fast to, to analyze this information, and uh, even for large code bases. And this is cool, this science offer a, a portable semantic API for us to to share standard information between different tools uh, without using a compiler or, or without the need to, to revise the compiler internals in, in the same way that the IntelliJ does for, for the Scala plugin. Now, as I say, uh, the, the build server protocol, uh, BSP works in, in the same way that LSP, just it's meant to, to, to create communication between the build, the build tools, and, and the language servers. So in, in this way, uh, the clients for, for, for BSP are going to be the, the language servers, meaning our editors or IDEs. And this enables a common functionality uh, for the developers tooling. Uh, supporting different tools at the same time, and communication uh, in an agnostic way uh, about the compile, the compiler that you are going to use. Uh, so this has integration with the Scala 2, and also we work with Delta. Um, and one particular implementation of this protocol is Blob. Um, this is a a build server tool for, for the Scala land. Uh, right now, it has uh, support for, for the major, uh, more common use build tools in, in the Scala language, meaning SBT, Maver, Gradle, uh, and MIL. And has integration for the Scala plugin in IntelliJ, and also works with metals, uh, which means that you are unable to, to use Blue and with whatever editor that metal support. Uh, the really cool thing about Blue is that it keep the compiler hot. This means that everything that you are compiling, they are going to catch uh, the compiled side effects. So they can boost, this kind is going to, to boost the, the velocity or, or the compiling cycles. Uh, this also is happening in SBT, we think, which is a compiler to, to keep uh, the instance hot. But 
in SBT, it's really easier to, to get this compiled code uh, doing a, a reload or creating another instance of SBT. With Bord, you have uh, only one instance that is centralized, uh, allows you to, to keep this, uh, the compiler code. Uh, it, at the end, you are going to, to have uh, an speed compiling times uh, until 20 times faster. Uh, this version 1.3 from Google was released uh, the last week, I think. Uh, with a decent amount of really cool features, like compiling the duplication. So now the server is going to catch different compilations. Uh, it, it, it blew up the text that another request for compilation has the same uh, compile side effects that a previous one is not going to, to, to trigger a compilation process again. It's going only to, this meaning that you are going to have only one compilation. Another uh, feature that is in this version, uh, we have compilation isolation, which means in, in a possible concurrent scenario for different uh, requests uh, to Blue. Uh, Blue is no longer to create a, a showing state on the ongoing compilations. That you can create this very easily, and since uh, maybe the AI is requesting a, a compilation on file save, and you are running tests as well at the same time. So this is going to create a concurrent state in the server, but the chair for this, the, the state for this uh, compilation process are going to be isolated. So you are not getting longer to, to get uh, weird errors uh, uh, in, in regards to this topic. So uh, also add uh, a synchronous tracing support, so you are going to be able to, to trace uh, your compilation process uh, and see if you can improve uh, you, you, you build process uh, according to the, the metrics that you are going to see. Uh, now it's um, using Ammonite, which is uh, a very cool uh, rail for Scala language with uh, multiple uh, different features that the Scala rail uh, doesn't have uh, yet. And app support for Scala 13 and the JDK 9 and 11. Uh, another news uh, in regards to uh, build tools. In SBT, we got a release 1.3, uh, which is really faster. Since this is integrated out of both uh, integrations with each uh, library managed. Uh, just like IB, uh, but this is completely written in pure Scala. Um, allows you to, to, to create parallel downloads for all the dependencies that you have. And also had improvements in regards to the, the class load management and the IO process. Uh, now this section is, is about a couple of build tools. Uh, we have uh, different options. Uh, maybe one of these is a, a better fit for certain particular projects, but it is, it's good to, to know that the just uh where may I be um, the, the trade-offs of, of use different build tools. Uh, the first one is CBT, which is time for Chris build tool. Um, this is an alternative for, for SBT. But the, the main difference is this tool uh, maps all, all the tasks for execution to the JVN method invocations. And supports uh, pretty much the same uh, feature that, that does SBT. Uh, also have uh, built-in uh, support for, for for .t compiled. Um, this aims to, to keep you in control uh, as 
the, the tasks here are, are more simple. Uh, and even the, the base code for this build tool is, is quite simple to, to understand so you can get familiar with how these uh, tools uh, work internally without uh, too much magic for, for, uh, uh, for the compiled level. Another tool uh, is MIL. Uh, this is by Laioi Hayao. Um, this is, the main difference for this tool is that it's uh, built upon uh, all the dust that we have the, from functional programming. Um, so this BIS tool can be even faster than SBT for certain cases, and it's flexible and easier to understand and use if you are very familiar with how uh, a, a functional program works, because in, in the end, the, this build tool is a, a pure, pure functional program. Uh, here is a, a, a good post uh, by Lee uh, on regards to this topic. is is worth it to, to read it. For different scenarios, uh, like monorepo environments and la really large code bases, we have uh, build tools like PANTS. Uh, this tool uh, aims to, to manage uh, and create really faster and consistent builds in, in such uh, scenarios. Um, supposed to bootstrap in concrete generation and to, to party uh, dependency resolution. And, uh, and also depends uh, inference for the source code to, to manage uh, the dependencies and the imports in the base code. For, for the same scenario, we have also Basel. That it was uh, a tool that was used uh, internally in Google, but then were, were, was open source. Um, this aims for to, to have reproducible builds that are really, really fast. And also allows you to, to create tests on the outputs of, of this building process to create certain guarantees that, that you build is correct in the interest that you are going to need to, uh, to deploy the, your application or, or, or also to, to monitor how uh, different like bottlenecks or, or, or this kind of things to, to the speed up uh, even more you, 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 you build process and is also use very hard uh, on catching all, all the things that, that are going to be the output or, or the bringing process. So in, with this mechanism, it's going to take advantage of the caching techniques to make these builds even faster uh, as you reproduce every time in your development cycle. So as a wrap up, for the different problems and initiatives that we are currently have in, in, in the Scala tooling ecosystem. Uh, for, for the tools that work with my editor, uh, you, you know uh, to, to choose an editor is a, a very personal thing. But uh, we have uh, initiatives like the LSP to, to make the, the the authors, the tool authors, uh, work even easier to to accommodate to these particularities that we have. Uh, for example, for in the terms for the analysis, combining uh, uh, build server like Blue uh, and Metals, uh, we can get an improvement in our productivity in regards uh, the, this this feedback cycle that you're going to have. Um, the cool thing, I, I know uh, some policies in, in different companies cannot allow you to, to create a pipeline with these things are, they are not, maybe not official uh, and have uh, experimental features. But the good thing is that 
this, the, these tools are, are so flexible that you can integrate it to, like, in your personal workflow, at least. Uh, you are not going to, to impact the, the rest of the team or whatever uh, CA, CD, pilot that you may have. So you can uh, take advantage of, of, of all these uh, improvements in regards to the tooling process. Uh, despite whatever uh, politics uh, you are surrounded by. Uh, we have uh, an additional links uh, with all this information and even more. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to say, so thank you very much. Works. Okay, one uh, bit specific question. You listed in the in SPT one or three that now we have um, semantic DB um, support for SPT. Yeah. yeah. Is this just an internal of SPT, or, or do we have a specific benefit as SPT users, which? Uh, which is really good for us when we use SPT 1.3. Maybe someone else can answer. This, this, the question is a bit specific. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the whole release is meant to, to, to create a, a even faster SPT. I, I tried it already, it's quite faster. And in regards for semantic DB, I, I, I'm not sure, but I think it's, it's more aimed to to create easier integration with another tools and also to, to integrate with Blue, I think. But I'm not quite sure about that. Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, the, the semantic DB support in SPT is about making it easier to configure the compiler plugin. Uh, previously, if you like Scalafix, you had, our docs had kind of a long section of config that you had to copy paste into build SPT and everyone copy pasted the same config and now you can just say in SPT I want semantic to be enabled equals true uh, and you save a lot of config um, that's that was the the support in 1.3 uh, does that answer your question or so it's mostly about reducing overhead of config yeah 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 you don't have to copy paste as much config code, yeah. which is good, <laughs> and 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 it does the same defaults correctly. Like yeah. so. Could imagine that uh, allows for automatic integration of libraries. Uh, because, uh, no, it, it, you know, that yeah, it's nothing that you didn't would couldn't do before. It's just a lot more convenient right now, yeah. and and so I'm very happy to see it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. More questions? Okay, then let's thank the speaker again.